Hi, I'm Adam Periscindola with Humane Society International, and um, I'm here on a dog meat farm in Hongseong, South Korea. This is our 14th uh, farm that we're closing. And um, one thing you'll notice on this farm is a lot of um, different smaller purebred dogs, and that's because this farmer also bred dogs for the pet trade, the puppy mill industry. Um, that he would sell off at auction, the puppies off at auction. Those puppies that weren't sold or moms and uh, breeders that um, get too old to breed, and then he would sell them into the trade, and then he has some traditional dog meat dogs as well. Um, so you can see really typical conditions here on these cages, wire flooring. Um, we did add straw. To the cages to give them some insulation. Um, some of them have these tubs um, that we put the straw in and others we just had to put the straw straight on the wire um, to at least give them something to get off of that wire. Um. <laughs> um, and so over here we have uh, two of our special friends who will be leaving tomorrow, which is going to be the start. First dogs will leave the farm tomorrow. This is Kevin. Kevin's very, very sweet. And here is his little pal, Owen. Uh, Kevin is definitely the um, dominant one in the cage here. And uh, But Owen also is very sweet. He's just a little more laid back. Um, as you can see with Owen, he's very, very underweight, um, and so we're really glad that he's going to be getting off one of the first dogs off the farm so that he can get back, start getting into, into better health and better weight. Uh, Kevin's pretty skinny too, harder to see with his fur, but they're both very, very sweet dogs, um, so we're super excited they'll be leaving tomorrow. As you can see, as with most of the dogs, their water... Uh, has frozen. It's winter here in Korea. It's very, very cold. Let's not. Hey, hey. Stop it. <laughs> it's very, very cold here in Korea. Um, and so these, uh, these dogs will, um, you know, they would have had to suffer here all winter. Uh, so we're really glad we're able to get them out at this point. Um, we have some more dachshunds here. A uh, lot of little even chihuahuas over here, um, little little Boston Terrier uh, mix, that one's got a little mange. You see a lot of hair loss, some mange, a lot of underweight dogs, and so um, it'll be really good for these dogs to get off, get the care they're going to need. Um, they're all going to either the U.S. or Canada, to our, either our temporary shelter in Canada, um, or ultimately end up back in the U.S. for some of them. Um, so they'll be able to get the full care and attention that they need. Um. <laughs> so as you can see, we got a lot of really cute, very sweet dogs. Um, and, you know, I want to thank everyone who's helped us to be able to get to this point where we could remove the dogs. And if you're interested in helping, uh, you can click on the donate donate button which is below um, and then you can help uh, f provide so that we can rescue more dogs from these farms as well as help all animals worldwide um, here we got some of our little poodle friends they're a little shy um, you know they they again without this straw they had absolutely nothing on the bottom they were living on the on the wire flooring which is really difficult causes injuries you may have seen a couple of the dogs limping um, from from this situation so uh, it'll be really nice to get them into some some proper proper housing and into loving homes where they can have a couch to lay on and this is Alice Alice is one of our favorites really really sweet um, older girl um, who you know lives in this again in this tiny tiny cage She's, as you can see, she has barely any area to look out. If she's laying down in the cage, she can't see out. So she spends most of the day um, just looking out, standing up so that she can see what's going on. She's very, very isolated. Um, 
and I think she'll be super excited to uh, actually get out of this cage and, and um, be somewhere where she can really be with people and, and not be isolated. Um, so then over here we have some of the more sort of traditional dogs that we see on dog meat farms, Jindo mixes. Um, <laughs> oh, it's okay. They're a, little, they're a little afraid of the phone. They're not sure what that is, but they're very sweet. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then we've got one of our uh, kind of Tosa mixes. Tosas are another breed. Tosa mixes are another breed. We see a lot on these dog meat farms. Um, and uh, we'll see her brother inside, actually. She's been separated from him. I think they, they weren't getting along. Um, okay, so we'll go over and uh, take a look over here at... Uh, the maternity ward. Um, before we get in there, you can see where we've been building, started building the crates for the dogs that'll be leaving this week. Um, and so we got here about an hour ago and we made good progress on, um, on getting everything ready for them um, so that they can be safely transported uh, starting tomorrow. So let's go in. In here is our maternity ward. Again, this is, uh, you know, a uh, puppy mill as well as a dog meat farm. And so he keeps most of the mothers and puppies in here. This is an unheated building. Um, so although they have some heat lamps, it still gets very, very cold in here. Um, and it's pretty bleak conditions for these dogs uh, all around. Um, hi, Billy. Hello, sweetheart. As you can see, many of them are really uh, demanding attention. A lot of them uh, really have no voice. Um, and we don't know if this is they were debarked or if it's just from excessive barking, but many of them have no voice in here. The farmer has bought them an auction, and so he doesn't know what happened. They came that way. Um, So uh, most of these moms and older puppies will be, will be going this week. The younger puppies uh, will be moving off the farm and keeping them safe until they're old enough to um, be transported for their new homes. Uh, and I just wanted to point out here um, one of, uh, another one of the Tosa dogs. Um, he has, we've seen this uh, a fair amount, he has some, some genetic problems with his legs and what happens is it's, it starts out as a genetic condition but it's also due to poor nutrition and living on these wire flooring which he would be on if we, again, if we hadn't provided the straw. Um, and you can see the legs uh, and a lot of times they have to have that surgically corrected. We've had several dogs we've had to do multiple surgeries on to correct that so that they can, you know, have a good quality of life. Um, okay, and then uh, again, we have a lot of different breeds. Got a little pug, pug down here. She, um, we see a lot of eye problems. She's got some eye problems, um, and you know, basically, these dogs, if they, if there's anything wrong with them, they don't really get any medical attention. Um, so they're just kind of stuck. She's also got some issues with her legs as well, her back knees. Um, and then here we have Courtney. So Courtney's going tomorrow and you can hear she's one that has either been debarked or lost her voice through, um, this, you know, through, through being left to bark and bark and bark. But she is very sweet. She's going to be a little shy. Come here, Courtney. What's the matter? Oh, come see Papa. Come on. Come see Papa. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we are. We're okay. Shh. There you go. She's a little nervous, but she's very sweet. And I think she'll very quickly learn that uh, people can be good. And, uh, you know, she's really, she's very, very thin. And, you know, she really deserves to be in someone's home. So, again, thank you to everyone who helped us to be able to get these dogs off this farm. And if you want to help and you want to be a part of the team, please 
click the donate button below and you can help dog, rescue dogs from these farms as well as help all animals worldwide.